we're here today at the California Academy of Sciences. We have the largest assemblage of biological materials in Western North America. Uh, these represent reference collections in both animal and plant life and uh, more than 20 million specimens. Uh, about 17 million of those specimens are in the entomology department. Entomology is the study of insects and other arthropods, of which many of them are colorful butterflies, as you see here. Among the butterflies that I've got here, we have morpho butterflies that are found from Central and Northern South America. Uh, they're very interesting in a number of ways. They live in the dark tropical forests and they signal mates by their bright coloration. So as you can see, this iridescent blue color can be seen over half a mile away. But it also attracts predators. And when predators are attacking, all they have to do is land on the dead leaves and they're almost invisible. Here we have the world's largest species of butterfly. This is the Queen Alexander's birdwing from Papua New Guinea. This species is what we call sexually dimorphic, which means the males and the females are differently colored, as you find oftentimes in different birds like peacocks. The males are brightly colored, the females are more drab. Because they're brightly colored, the males are attacked by predators a lot more than the females are. The females, on the other hand, survive to lay eggs and produce another generation. I find this fascinating because here you have one genetic makeup that is being, is evolving in two different directions. Males are evolving to be brightly colored because that's what attracts the, the females. The females are evolving to be more drab, to be better protected. Here we have the California state butterfly. This is the California dog-faced butterfly. The first column are males. The next column are females. Notice that the males are differently colored than the females. They're more brightly colored with heavier black markings. And those black markings oftentimes will profile the outline of a poodle's head. Hence the name dog-faced butterfly. But the point of this drawer is that through genetic recombination, just as every human being is different, so too is every insect, including every butterfly. And that forms the basis of natural selection and evolution. Also in this drawer, we have a genendomorph down in the corner. These are extremely rare mutants. They're half male, half female. People have had a fascination with butterflies for a long time. Many little children grow up chasing after butterflies. I did. <laughs> Insects uh, depict biological principles very well. And butterflies depict these same principles uh, amongst the best of all of our insects because of their broad wings and bright colors. Consequently, such things as natural selection, sexual dimorphism, are very vividly displayed. And so many of the biological principles that we study are in fact based on the wings of butterflies. Okay.